Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Saturday, June 28th. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center or National Weather Service, not me. Well, here we are at the end of June, one month into the Atlantic hurricane season, and we finally have a legitimate tropical disturbance to track. We did have 90L down in the Bay of Campeche in the beginning of June, but that never really had much of a chance. This is Invest 91L here, an uh, area of low pressure. Uh, that's forming off of the tail end of this frontal boundary that's come down off of North Carolina and this is a fairly typical setup for the early season where you have a front coming down and at the tail end you get low pressure high pressure builds into the north and traps it for a while and you can see that that's what's happening now with these clear skies up near Virginia and Maryland showing this high pressure with east northeasterly winds coming into the north side of this low and that's going to trap this down here for a little while and you can see that in the model tracks which have it meandering around in here off of the southeast US coastline for the next several days actually could be four or five days before it actually starts moving out of the area so it's going to have a lot of time to sit over what are warmer than normal waters off of the southeast coast here 27 to 28 degrees Celsius that is warmer than normal for this time of year. And that's why systems in this area right here are going to be what we watch this season because this area will be probably the most conducive area of the Atlantic for such systems to develop. But will this one become our first tropical storm? Well, there are some good things for development. One is that you can see these cirrus clouds arcing clockwise away from the low here. This is indicating a favorable protective bubble of low wind shear over the system right now, and that's going to remain in place for the next few days, which could allow these thunderstorms to get going and uh, stack up and form a circulation over time. And it will have a lot of time to try to do that. One problem, though, is that uh, convergence in the low levels right now is pretty good on the north side as you typically do on the north side of the front there's high pressure here the winds come down into the northern side of the circulation so you can see the nice banding convection forming on the north side however as is typical with these kinds of systems this front that's dropping down keeps the flow kind of lackluster down here so you can see these winds coming out of the southwest it's really not that great on this side the south not a lot of conversions and the west side really not a lot of convergence all this air is kind of flowing out here and this is a really loose type system so you can see it trying to spin here but only really the north side has a nice pressure gradient to work with now eventually over time this front can drag itself out towards the east and this can become fully cut off and uh, have a little bit of a more favorable wind pattern around it. Um, but for the moment uh, we have to wait until that happens before this really tries to spin up if it's going to. Now there are a few things to consider um, in whether this will actually develop or not. This is the GFS out to 24 hours. The color fill is the 500 millibar height and the black lines are the isobars showing the pressure. So you can see our closed isobar here indicating our low. Uh, you notice it's 1,017 millibars here by tomorrow. Right now it's about 1,018. There's really high pressures in this area of the world right now and uh, that's not a great thing. Uh, you generally want those pressures to get down towards 1,010 millibars off the southeast coast before things really start to get going. Um, but it will have time again to develop convection and lower this pressure. But notice what we have again, we have this front that dangled down, left this at the tail, and you see the high pressure off of Nantucket here to the north. And this is uh, trapping this down here and allowing it some time over this water. But notice though that this ridge in the orange colors here, it's kind of thin, and this indicates to you that this is moving rather quickly off to the east because we have this behind it, this trough that's advecting out of the northern plains and coming eastward. So this is a progressive pattern. And this means that this ridge here is not going to stay north of the system for very long. So if we go out to 72 hours, you see that our high uh, at the surface has already moved out well towards the east, and we have this trough coming in in the upper levels over the uh, Lake Superior and coming quickly towards the east. Now our system is down here, uh, still not really closed low anymore on the GFS even, but you can see it's still off the southeastern coast. And what happens now is since this pattern is progressive, this trough comes right in across the lakes. So if we go towards Wednesday, we see this trough here and then the flow just opens up you can see these isobars are all out of the south and southwest here our high is way off to the east big H over here and our low is actually um, opened up by the GFS it's actually right here uh, this little trough and uh, this flow is just opened up and what this means is there's very little low level convergence and these systems just tend to open up and recurve um, either near the coast or just near the coast out to sea this way and uh, don't really do much 
So the key for this system in this kind of a pattern is that it needs to develop when it has a setup like this, when it's south of this high and it has some time to meander around in here. If it can develop before the flow opens up, then you, instead of having an open trough here like the GFS shows, you would have a potential tropical storm moving up and recurving. And then once they start recurving northeastward, they can start to bomb out uh, over the open ocean, usually not a threat to land, uh, but they can become rather strong as they move out to sea, kind of like Hurricane Alex did in 2004, became a major hurricane out here in the middle of the Atlantic when it developed as the first storm of that season. Now, what's interesting is the European this morning uh, changed things up a little bit from the other models in that it is essentially much slower than the GFS, uh, Canadian, UK Met, and most of the other models. This is out to day five, which would be Thursday. And uh, you can see it's still down here northeast of Cape Canaveral, and it actually has a low here, whereas the GFS has an open trough. And uh, what the European does is this trough up here, it's actually hard to see, so I'll trace it for you. Here are the the 500 millibar height lines right in here. And uh, this trough here is actually slower. And uh, this low here has more time to move up and it hangs back. So by day six, it's still off of South Carolina. The GFS and the other models have it going out to sea already. The European is much slower. And so you notice that although by day five, the flow is opened up out of the southwest of the surface. You can see all these black isobars oriented that direction. This high is back here. And so by day six, since this low is still down here, this high is allowed to come towards the east over the top and all of a sudden the flow closes off again. You get this bridging ridge right here and all of a sudden this low has a much nicer environment with air converging into it for it to develop and you can see it start to bomb out here and then by day seven it moves into North Carolina as what would be a strong tropical storm with 60 mile per hour winds or greater with this bridging ridge to the north. Now that's the danger with situations like these is that if the high can get to the north and stay there, these things can bomb out as they come towards the coast and then make it actually onto land as opposed to moving out to sea without clipping the coast. Now again, all of this is a product of the European being slower with this system. And right now it's kind of an outlier. Its ensembles don't even agree with it very much. And this was only the first run that it has showed something like this. Last night's run did not. This morning's run did. I'd like to see some more consistency in this uh, before giving it too much thought because uh, when we're talking about a situation like this, what the European essentially does is it says, okay, here's a trough. Here's the low down here. We're going to let traffic go by to the north and then we'll let the low slowly come up and the first trough goes and then the second trough behind it comes in in time to take this away, but not before this ridge behind the first trough builds into the north and helps it develop. This is not something that typically happens when you have a trough that goes by here. Here's the first one. Here's the second one by Wednesday. It's kind of a sheared trough in that the first piece goes and the second piece lags behind. So when you have something down here, it's not typically going to just let this go by. This troughiness in here over the Great Lakes is going to remain for a few days and take a few days to actually pass through. So by the time we get to later in the week, this low or whatever there is down here is likely to be recurving away, not really stalling down here the way the European shows. So what I'm essentially saying is I'm not sure I buy this um, hyperbolic solution that the European currently shows relative to the other models, uh, but we will have to see. In a weak steering current situation like this down here, uh, there's of course time to wait and see whether the models pick up on something that we're not currently seeing, uh, but right now there's not a lot to say except that this low will have a lot of time to meander around over this warm water over the next few days. The NHC has a high chance of development over the next five days and uh, given the time that it has to spin up here, that is certainly very possible. Uh, whether or not the European solution is something that we're going to see, a strong tropical storm making landfall in the Carolinas, I think it's less likely than not personally right now, but it's uh, very difficult to say this far in advance because we have several days to watch this and we will uh, require observation of the circulation over the next few days to get a handle on whether it will actually develop. You just gotta watch these things. Uh, development will be slow though, as uh, the environment is not perfect and it will take its time spinning up here. So we will have plenty of time to watch it just off our coast. Uh, heavy rains may affect uh, the coastline here though as this thing uh, comes down here and then recurves back up towards the northeast. The Carolinas may definitely get some of that rain and uh, we'll keep an eye on it. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.